expressions. Okay. And we're going to take a verbal model like the sum of 5 and a number x, or the quotient of x and 15, or something like that. We're going to be just simple expressions putting them together. Okay. Uh, now that's an expression, and then we're going to be talking about equations. Now right up top, uh, we're going to talk about the difference between these two things. Expressions is all 1.3, and equations is all 1.4. We're going to be writing them out. Um, and a lot of times, everything in those categories just gets called equations. People will say this equation and that equation when they're not equations. Um, and it's not just a, a math geek thing to make sure you're calling the right things equations. It's important to know the difference between an expression and an equation and to just use that vocab correctly. So that when I say equation, you don't get confused because you think that they're the same thing. Okay, so um, to start with, um, 1.3 is about expressions. And 1.4 is about equations. Very simple difference, and uh, there's, there's no need to be confused after today. So an expression is basically not an equation. If it's not an equation, then you can be safe to call it an expression. All right. So let's use this as an example. How many points was your test worth? Thirty-one points. Uh, so. When I'm, you, you see what I marked there is how many you got wrong and how many points you missed on each question. It's, it's easier for me to count the number that you got wrong than the number you got right most of the time. Okay. So if I count up the number that you got wrong, and I know how much the whole test is worth, then if x is the number you got wrong, and the test is worth 31 points, What's an expression we could use that whatever x is, whatever the number of points you got wrong that you missed, uh, this expression would tell me how many points you got right, that you got credit for. What's an expression that would tell us how many you got right? <coughs> x divided by 31. What's x? The number you got wrong. So if you got 5 wrong, out of 31. And I want to know how many you got right. You take 5 over 31. Not quite. Yeah. 31 minus Right. If, you got, if there's 31 that you could possibly get right, and you got x wrong, you take x away from 31. Uh, and then that would be how many you got correct. Right. So 31 minus x, that's the number Correct. Okay. Not an equation, an expression. Just expressing a value. And once we know what x is, then we could you know, find the, the value of this expression. So but it's not an equation. It's not an equation until we say something about it. Like if I say that a particular student got 29 and a half questions correct, then I could write an equation out of this, right? What, what equation could I write with that information? This expression and the fact that they got 29 and a half correct. What does this expression tell us when we do the math? Because we know what x is. What does it tell us when we take 31 minus the number wrong? It shows you how many you got right. Okay, it shows you how many you got right. So if I tell you that I was grading somebody's test and I found that they got 29 and a half correct, then what kind of an equation could I make with this expression, the information I just gave you? Yeses. 
what did I do to find that 29 and a half that were correct? How did I calculate that, Jamie? You took how many points in the and subtracted how many you got I did this, right? Did this. Okay, so I did that. Okay. So how can I write an equation now, given that I did that to find the number right, and the number right was how many? What did you say? Twenty-nine and a half. So how do I make an equation out of that? <coughs> what does that equation need? It's a special symbol. What kind of a symbol does it need? Jamie? It needs an equal sign, right? They're that same root word equation needs an equal sign. All right, so I use an equal sign. What would I put on the other side of the equal sign? In this situation, where somebody got how many correct? So what goes on the other side of the equal sign? Okay, so I took 31 minus x and got 29 and a half. That's an equation. In this expression, x is an unknown. It, it, it varies. It's a variable. Right? It could be anything. Well, within reason. It could be something from 0 to 31. You're not going to get more than 31 wrong. You're not going to get less than 0 wrong, usually. Okay. So, but now, can x be anything in this equation? Danielle, is it possible for x to just be anything we want? in this equation. We put in 5 in there and it works? It's just, that's fine? No. Okay, so in this expression, can I plug 5 in for x? Right here? That'd be fine, right? I'm just, just curious what I would get if I got 5 wrong, right? So I put in 5 and figure it out. But here, how many numbers work for x? 1. There's one number that works for x. How do we know it's the right one? We do a 31 minus 29.5. Um, that's how we could find what x is. But say I just gave you an x. Say, I'm telling you x is 5. How do you know if that's right or wrong? Because 31 minus 5 would not be 29.5. Yes, exactly. If I put the number that, I, that I'm saying is a solution, and that's the word we're learning right now, solution. If I tell you that x equals 5, you want to know, is that correct? What you want to know is, is 5 a solution? Okay. And the way Sarah just said was basically plug 5 into x and see if the left side equals the right side. Right. The very important thing about this symbol, about equations, is that the left side and the right side are the same. They're exactly the same. They cannot be something different. Right. And I know that's a pretty basic thing that you guys understand, but it's a really important thing that though you understand it now, later, you might forget that really important fact. And just remembering that can help us through a lot of uh, confusion. So here's an equation, 31 minus x equals 29.5. We're saying something about this quantity. But here, we're not saying anything about it. There's not truth or false. Okay? It's not true or false. This has to be true. This statement right here has to be true. Okay? So. How do we know the number is a solution? If I tell you a number and, and it is the solution, how do you check and make sure that the number I'm telling you is a solution? Because you do 31 minus that number to see if it's true. You do 31 minus that number to see if it comes out to be 29.5, right? So is 5 a solution? No. No, it's not. OK. Is uh, what, 1 and a half a solution? Put one and a half in there, 31 minus one and a half. Is that equal to, is this 29.5? Yeah, it is. So, is 1.5 a solution? Yes, it is. So, again, an expression is just this thing, it's a quantity, it's just a number, right? 
Five could be an expression. The number five is an expression. 31 minus x is an expression. 32 minus 1 plus y is an expression. But once we say that it's equal to something, that's an equation. So lots of times when I talk to students, they, they say, this equation, how do we solve this equation, that kind of stuff. There is no solving this, for one thing. You can't solve it. It's not solvable. There's no solution to something that's just who knows what it is. But equations have solutions. And we can check solutions by plugging them in and seeing are both sides equal. Is the statement true? If, if I read this in words, 31 minus 1.5 is 29.5. Did I just say a true thing? Yeah, I did. So yes, it is uh, a solution to that equation. Okay. So we're going to be writing more expressions. There's a, an example of an expression we, you know, we figured out. We broke down the words, and I said that 31 was the, the total number of points possible. X was the number that you would get wrong. That's the variable. What's the expression? 31 minus X tells me how many you got right. Okay. Um, Let's write down another expression. I'm going to look at Caleb now. Now, now that we have an expression that tells us how many we got correct, how do we figure out what your percentage <coughs> is? Well, x represents what? The number wrong. So do you take your number wrong over 31 to figure out the percent your score is, the score that I put right there next to the percent sign? Say again. Total over the number wrong. Total over the number wrong? Um, yeah, let me find a percentage. Wouldn't you put the number you got right over the whole thing? Right, you got the part over the whole. How many did you get right over how many were possible? That's, that's a percentage. Take the part over the whole. Okay. So, well, x isn't the number you got right. You want to take the number you got right over, over what? Okay, let's try this. Number correct over total possible. Is that right? Is that going to give us a percentage? Of, that's generally how you would calculate the percentage of a test. Number correct over the total possible points. Okay. So how do we calculate the number you get correct? As an example. So you got 29.5 right out of 31. Go ahead and get your calculators out and divide that and see does that give you a percentage? The number that you get is that a percentage? Yeah, 
Yeah, Bryce, what'd you find? Um, 95% by a bunch of numbers, but if you round it down, it's 95%. Okay, so when you did this, it, your, computer, your calculator reads 95%? No, it's like 95, um, just a bunch of numbers that keep going and repeat. Well, I'm being real specific here. When you divide this number by that, what do you get? What is the number that you get? E five one six one two nine zero three two two five eight oh eight zero six four. Alexis, do you have something else? It's a decimal. It's a decimal, right? It's, what is the decimal? Point nine five. Ah, uh, so what you get is point nine five. I know you're like automatically turning that into a percent, but the number that you get from this is decimal point nine five and so on and so on. What do we do with that number to get the percent? <laughs> Okay, now math, that's, that's that's not like an operation, right? That's a, a mental thing. So what do we do to a number if it's 0.95 and we want to move that decimal over twice? What mathematical operation does that? You multiply by something, you know this? Multiply <coughs> by a number, move the decimal over twice. Ten or a hundred? Is it okay? This is, these are vague memories. Spit it back in your mind, right? If you want, let's say you multiply uh, three times ten. What is that? That's thirty. What if you multiply sixty-five times ten? Six fifty. How far over is the decimal going? Sixty-five times ten is six fifty. How far over did that decimal move? <coughs> you can go over it once. Yeah. You just added a zero on the end. It's not 10, it was, you know, if, if, it, if it is 10 or 100, it's clearly not 10, so maybe it's 100. Okay. Uh, and I'll just confirm that it is 100. If you multiply by 100, you move over two zeros, you multiply by 1,000, you move over three decimal places, you multiply by, well, one with however many zeros, however many zeros you have, you move the decimal over that many times. Does that, that sound familiar? You guys, I imagine you have seen that before. Okay, so we multiply this by 100. Then we get the 95 or so percent, right? That Bryce gave us earlier. Okay. So this expression, the number right over the total number possible, will give us some decimal. And then if we multiply that by what? ready to expel words from your mouth whenever I ask. And you have any kind of inkling. Sarah, you look like it's right. Your words are right there, ready to come out. Multiply by what? 100. Multiply by 100. What is this an expression for? Jada? Percentage. It's the, the percentage, yeah. The percentage that you get on your test, right? We can throw a big percent there, right there in the, uh, on the end, and we'll get the percent. And actually, to make things quicker as I'm grading your tests, this is exactly what I do. I just use my calculator to speed the whole thing up, okay? Because our calculators can, well, these calculators can deal with variables. Okay, let me clear this out. So if your test is worth 31, here's what I do. 31 minus x, okay? And I want the results of that because I, I do write down how many you got, excuse me, I, that you got correct, right? You look on your test and I write down how many you got correct. So that's that result, right? So I want that. I don't, I, I don't want to just get the percent, but then I do also want the percent, okay? So then I'll take 31, make sure to use parentheses for our order of operations, right? 31 minus x, that's the number that you get right. What am I going to do with that number? Take 
the number right, if I'm looking for the percent, the first part is going to be what? by the total 31 and then multiply by 100 okay and that'll give us the percent and the cool thing about these calculators is if I want to just plug numbers in for X and see what comes out I can do that we can go into this thing called the table okay and let's come down here and if somebody got one and a half wrong right I count up the number wrong one and a half Enter. Well, this is uh, 31 minus one and a half, and this is the percentage for somebody who got one and a half wrong, and therefore 29 and a half correct. Okay. So I just, I can even just count up the, the little pieces. I can say uh, you got one wrong, then you got a, well, you got another half a point incorrect, plus another 0.25 was incorrect, plus another point was uh, was missed for something else. I hit enter. Total is 2.75. Subtract that from 31. I get 28.25. Your percentage is 91. So you can see, this for me, a math teacher, the usefulness of these expressions uh, and being able to plug numbers in for x and see what comes out. Okay. So let's continue with some expressions. Let's uh, write some simple expressions based on some simple verbal statements. Um, this is going to be in 1.3. And we'll just turn to the homework problems. Okay. Number four, I'm just going to have you guys look on number four, come around and see how you're doing. <coughs> Product.
Right. Again, what we got here. Yeah, again, the, the, the word product is a word that means, I lost my pen. A product is uh, the result of multiplying two things together. So if we do two times three, this little dot right here in the middle is, is one uh, m most commonly used for multiplication. That gives us six, and six is called the product. It's called the product because we use multiplication to get six. Okay, so if we want to get a product out of six and y, what do we do with six and y? Them together. I see a lot of six times y. Okay, and that symbol, that cross symbol, does mean multiplication, right? Only in the, now that we start using variables, could that start to look confusing? Mm -hmm. What does it look like? Six xy. It looks like the product of six and x and y. All right. So we'll we'll use that symbol very rarely. Okay, nowadays. Uh, we could do six times y with a, with a dot like that. Cool. Or since we do this so often, we have coefficients next to variables so often, if we just write two numbers, well, a number next to a variable, it's understood that what we're doing is multiplying them. Okay. Could mean anything we wanted to, but we agreed that it'll be six multiplied by y. Okay. Um, let's just review some vocab here real quick. What is sum, addition, Okay, what about subtraction? What word is used for subtraction? Is that difference? difference? And we know product is uh, multiplication. What about when you divide? Quotient. And quotient, good.
Okay, so the first thing let's talk about is this word square. Okay. First of all, it's the square of what? Of P, not the square of 3. It's the square of P. What, how do we interpret that then? What is the square of P? How do we write that algebraically? The square of P, P squared. There's quite a few of these, but is this the square of P? What is this? The square root of P. So it's, uh, it sounds really close. Okay. Well, that's, that's handled, the square of P, okay? So a number of square would be three less than that, three less than that thing. So how do we express that we've got three less than something? Nathan? Minus three, right? There was quite a bit of three minus p squared. There's a few, at least a few people writing that. And that, I guess that, that makes, that would be an easy mistake to make. But we want, this would be p squared less than three. We want three less than something. <coughs> if you have something and then later you have three less, you would subtract three. If you had 12 and then you uh, had three less, you had nine, you got that by subtracting three from your original amount. Well, let's move on to uh, expressions where it's more true to life, where something's happening. We have to figure out, is this a product, or is this going to be a difference, or a quotient, or you know, what, what fits the situation. Um, look at 16. So the number of pages left to read. To, that's not right. To read. In a five page article. If you have read X pages. So go ahead. See if you can figure out. Just an expression that <clears throat> what we're going to do is, you know, x is the variable, and once we settle on a value for x, we plug in a, a value like 3 or something, into this expression, and we do the math, the math will result in telling us how many pages are left to read. This was just the number symbol that I was writing there. 
That used to be number before it meant hashtag. So the number of pages that you have left to read in a five page article, if you've read X pages, or I didn't pay attention closely enough, it said P pages in the book, but it doesn't really matter. If you have five pages total to read, and you've read P pages, how do you, what expression tells you how many pages are left to read? Right? Which is five minus P? Yeah, if you, you could, it's helpful to think about some specific examples. If I've read three, how would I find out how many I have left? Well, if I've read, there's five to read, I've read three of them. Five minus three would give me the two that are left, right? That should work for whatever the number is. Five minus five, I'm done. There's nothing left to read. Five minus one, I still have four pages left to read. Um, so let's let's go on to something called a rate. Um, yeah. Yeah, this is two pictures. Can you tell what this is a picture of? And what is this telling us? What is this number telling us on the water fountain? Yes. How many plastic bottles? Right. How many how many plastic bottles have we saved uh, so far? Right. Since that's been installed. Um, so how about if I ask you how many bottles we're saving every day? Could you find that? These are the dates, right? This is September 17th, and this is October 2nd, yesterday. Why don't you do that? Why don't you figure out for me how many bottles per day we're saving? So pick up your pencils and your hands. Right, while I'm still writing things down, maybe you get a, a calculator out. Start punching numbers into that bad boy. Part of the problem is somebody <laughs> can't read it. Uh, I'll try to make it more legible. Okay. Five, five. Okay. So every day, how many bottles are being saved? That's what we're looking for. days in September. If you didn't know that, that, that's enough information about the days. Because you got the dates there, September 17th, and then that's October 2nd, the bottom.
so uh, this, this counter here has been going since the first day it was installed, and then when people come by and fill up their water bottles, it counts up. I, I think we figured out the, in another class that it was 24 ounces. So every 24 ounces that comes out, uh, it adds a one, right? Because that's the equivalent of a bottle that you didn't buy at the store and drink that water and throw the bottle away. So that's the, the purpose of this counter. Um, and since the day it was installed until September 17th, we had saved 2,823 bottles, supposedly. And then just uh, a little while later, on the 2nd of October, we had saved 4,655. Right? It just keeps going up. It doesn't start over and count every day. It counts just bottle after bottle after bottle. And we want to know how many bottles we're saving every day. Does anybody have a number, Sarah? 122. Okay, do you have a decimal there? 0.13. 0.13, repeating, right? Yeah. Uh, bottles. So Sarah, how did you come to that conclusion? Um, I did uh, 4,655. Well, I subtracted 2,823 from that, and then I divided by 15, which is from the 17th to the 7th. Okay, so from the 17th until the 30th of September was uh, 13 days, and then two more days is 15 days. Is that about how you figured that out? Okay. Um, all right, so you just found the difference of the end reading uh, and the beginning reading, and that's how many, how many what? How many bottles? How many bottles, right? That's a, a number of bottles. Bottles that we saved, right? In a period of? 15 days. 15 days. And what is that 4655 minus 2823? 1,832. Okay. So this is what we call a rate. If, you, if one thing is changing uh, with respect to this other thing, like as, as days go by, more bottles get saved. Right? And that, that ratio of bottles to days, it's called a rate. Can you think of any other rates that you use in everyday life? Miles per hour, miles per hour probably the, the most common one, right? We're getting in cars all the time, miles per hour, that's how fast we're driving. What about if you drive in Canada? Kilometers per hour. Uh, any other rates? Anything would be a rate. You can compare two things, it might seem odd, but doesn't it have to be a speed, even? But if you're going to save money on gas, what rate do you care about? Miles per gallon. Miles per gallon. Like how many miles do I use? Or how many gallons do I use? Wait, how many miles can I go on one gallon? That's what we want to know. Pencils per day? Pencils per, how many pencils do I use per day? It's probably a, a, you know, a decimal. Not a whole, are you using several pencils a day? So if you are, you should really back to school. That's too many pencils. Um, huh? um, how about you know, feet per second? That's another speed. How about inches per year? Does that sound like the one you would use very often? Inches per year. Can you think of something that would move inches per year? Glaciers? I don't know. I, I, one time we were, we were staying in Glacier, and uh, I lived in Montana for a while, and uh, you know, the place is called Glacier National Park, and I pull up to the, the little, I don't know, the booth where you pay the guy, and there's a, a ranger or something sitting in there, and I pull up and I say, I've got a question. What's a glacier? I had no idea what a glacier was. I knew it had something to do with ice. But then he told me all the stuff. There's like all these specifications, and one of them is how far it moves every year. I had to move at a certain rate every year. I don't know what it is, inches or if it's feet or what, but it sounds good. Um, Hawaii is moving at a rate of four inches per year. Did you know that? It's moving towards Japan at a rate of four inches per year. So watch out for that one day. Um, 
So anyway, here's the rate, right? 1,832 bottles in 15 days. How do we figure out how many of that, how many bottles that is per day? That, you divide this by that, right? It looks like a division problem. It is a division problem. We divide this thing by that thing, 1,832 by 15. Doesn't that make sense, right? When we divide one number by another, we're saying, let's take this and split it up into 15 pieces and then look at one of those pieces and see how many bottles are in that piece that day. Right? Just cutting it up into 15 pieces and saying, and looking at one of those pieces, one of those groups, and saying how many bottles are in that group in that day. So according to our calculations, we're saving around 122 a day. Okay? So when we, we get it down to per day, or we can write it this way, 122.13 repeating bottles per one day, that's what we're really saying when we say per day, or we say miles per hour, saying miles per one hour, feet per one year, or whatever. Okay, the reason it's, well I haven't even told you what it's called, but here what we have is a single unit of measure in, uh, in days, right? A single day unit. That's why we call this a unit rate. When the denominator gets down to one unit, one day, one mile, one second, one year, whatever. That's when we're talking about a unit rate. How many of these get used up or saved or whatever for that one thing? All right, so that's a unit rate. Um, so now let's just, this, this is not really part of what you have to do, but let's talk about this rate. Do you think that's accurate? Do you think every day we're saving that many? Uh, well, I guess because of this one fountain. Do you think that's right? Do you think we're saving that much every day? Seems reasonable, doesn't it? We took actual measurements and we found a difference and divided and all that kind of stuff. What about on a Saturday? Do you think we're saving 122 on a Saturday? Do you think we're saving more or less? Why? Here on a Saturday. There's me and this guy's wrestling, and that's about it. Right? That's who's here on a Saturday. Uh, what about on a hot day? August compared to December. Do you think that'll be the same? We're using, we're, we're using as much water in August as in December. So it's, it's not going to be exactly right for every day. It's not even going to be really approximately right for every day, but for the span, it's on average, it seems reasonable, about that much per day. That's just a little extra. Okay. <coughs> All right. okay. Well, now let's move over. We talked about the difference between expressions and equations, and now we'll go into uh, equations. And not just equations, but equations and uh, inequalities. So just because the, the vocab seems to be a little bit of a hang up, I'm trying to get that stuff straight. Let's just start off with just some simple numbers and variables, see if we can uh, figure out uh, how to interpret all this. So number three and 1.4. You can just start on that, or you can wait until I write it. But the sum uh, 42, and let's just say n, a number n, is equal to what we actually have is two expressions here, and we set those expressions equal.
the sum. Sum means addition. We clearly get that, 42. And the sum of 42 and n is equal to 51. This is all looking good out there. Um, <coughs> you guys want to take a break for like two minutes and stand up and stretch? Huh? On the sound. Let's do that. Stand up and stretch for a little bit. So, <clears throat> 42 plus n. Now let me ask you this. This is just a, an extension of this problem. Is 3 a solution? Is 3 a solution to this equation? No. no. I'm not asking what the solution is. I'm asking if 3 is a solution. Is the solution? 3 is not. How do you know? Because 40, not because the solution is something other than 3. That's not what I want to hear. I want to hear you, you understand that a solution is a number that if you plug it in, what's going to happen if you plug in the solution, the one that actually is the solution? It's going to equal 51. What's that? It's going to equal 51. This side will equal that side. This will be 51 and this will be 51. That's, to say that it equals 51 is really specific, but if we get the solution, what will happen is the equation will be true. And if we don't have the solution, the equation will be? What? Not true. Not true. It'll be false. We won't have gotten a true statement if we plug in something that's not the solution. Okay? Um, well, it's a pretty simple equation, right? This is what we're, this is what algebra is all about, really. We let letters represent numbers, and then we find out what that letter must be standing <coughs> for. What that what that letter must be representing. Right? What the solution is. Okay. Well, this one's pretty simple. What what would the solution have to be? I heard a whisper of a nine. Yes. So you would have to add nine to 42 to get to 51. Clearly nine is the solution. Nine is the solution. If we just look at it and we say, well, that's what it would have to be. That's what's called mental math. Catchphrase, I guess. We use mental math to find that the solution is 9. Okay. Now, um, oftentimes, there, there gets to be like two classes of people in an algebra class. Uh, you both start out using mental math. Because right? this, this answer is pretty clear. It's got to be 9. Okay. And you say, you just, you just know. Right? You just know the answer. Then we get into some, some algebraic um, uh, approaches and strategies and that kind of thing, uh, and I ask you to show your work, there's going to be resistance from some. To say, I just know it. I just know the answer. And clearly, we can't just know the answer here. But as equations get more and more complicated, it will, become, it will get to a point where it's just impossible for you to just know. Okay? And it wouldn't be very hard for me to set up an equation you, you don't just know the answer to. So we won't start quite yet, but we'll start pretty soon. And we're going to be doing things to equations that seem really just overkill. Right? And you're going to say, I just, I just see the answer. I just know what it would have to be. Um, and that's fine for a time. But then we're going to want to, because those equations are going to get difficult, we're going to keep using these same approaches. Uh, don't rely on that. Don't rely on your ability to just see the answer. And I don't know how to show you how I got the answer that I can for, for a bit, we'll use mental math. We are going to diverge from that. Uh, and if you come with me on the, on the not just mental math train, then you'll be in good shape. Uh, there's an equation. You guys did well. Okay. Um, let's see if we can get that. Let's, let's see. With your guys' knowledge of this 
next subject is the product of 8 and k is greater than 4 and no more than 16. Let's just start here. Start with that, and then we'll worry about that other part in just a second. So can you write down um, a statement, okay? It won't be an equation, right? Because it's not saying they're equal. No, no part of this is saying that they're equal, so it's not an equation. Um, and what I'm looking to see is, is, do you know how to handle that? Do you know what symbols convey that in an algebraic statement, or do you not? Most of you wrote this, and this is what we're looking for. The product of 8 and k is greater than 4. Okay. Um, now, somebody showed me that, that this word greater, sometimes if you said uh, 4 greater than x, let's say. And now in that context, that, that means like 4 more than x, or x plus 4, right? Now this is saying something, and it really comes down to this word right here, is. It's saying that this is something. It's making a, a true or false statement about whatever. If you use the word is, you're doing that, right? Just think about any sentence where you use the word is, you are saying that this is that, right? You're making a definitive statement, and, whether, and, and it's either true or it's false. There's no way, it's not ambiguous, okay? But this is a little ambiguous. This is not true or false, it just is. It's just a, a four plus x, x plus four, okay? But this, with the word is, so keep a, a, word, a look out for that word is. If you're saying that this is greater than four, then you're saying that this is, in, its quantity is greater, it's larger than four, okay? All right. Well, there was a little more to that statement. saying, and no more, uh, no more than, okay, it's, it's saying something is also no more than, what is, what is it making this statement about, is no more, what is no more than something else, yeah, equals, um, or <coughs> no, okay, I mean, <coughs> Less than or equal to. That's what no more than means. But what is it saying? Like, what's it referring to? Like, what is no more than something else? A cat is no more than something else? What? The number Yes, which number? Where do we find this number? Um, well, what, it's, what I'm trying to get to is, this is still referring to 8K, right? It's saying something else about 8K. It's saying that it's no more than 16, okay? If you are no more than something, then, well, you're not more than it, right? But could you be the same as it and not be more than it, right? So how do we say that, John? <coughs> 
I don't know what to say. What was that? You said this or? <clears throat> um, I, I'm pretty sure I just said it's West Bank or Eagle King. Right, exactly right. So if you're not more than something, then you're less than it. Or you're equal to it, that's OK. You're still not more than it if you're equal to it. So 8K would also need to be less than or equal to 16. So we could write that in the same, you know, in the same space. We don't even have to write a second thing. We can squeeze it in between those two things. And actually, it might make more sense for us to write it in order of smallest to largest. So smallest is 4, 8K is in between, and 16 is the largest. So either way is fine. I wouldn't mark you wrong for, for the first one, but the second one makes a little more intuitive sense. Doing pretty well with equations. Um, we check solutions. That's kind of weird. So, um, I want you to think back to the beginning of our discussion today. Just after we talked about the test, I wrote up here the difference between uh, e expressions and equations, and uh, we talked about the scores on a test. All right. So, um, I want us to, to, to write a statement um, This is on a 31 point test. Can, can you get wrong? Uh, uh, and get, uh, let's say, 82%. Okay. This is on a 31 point test. Figure it out however you want to figure it out. Don't, don't feel confined to an equation. We'll come back to an equation, but don't feel confined to that. Figure out how many could you get wrong, and try your best not to guess and check. Just guessing and guessing and guessing a number, and then seeing if that comes out to be 82.
or is how many you can miss, not how many you get right? Saw a couple different things. Saw, you know, I don't know how many I have to get right, but I do know that I'll take the number right and divide it by 31. And what do you want that to be? What do you want that to come out to be? Yes? 82%. 82%, okay. So we'll call it 0.82. Okay. Um, and then we can just. Check and guess. You know, guess checks solutions to this equation. So that's great. That's an equation that has a solution. Now, the solution to this equation isn't quite what we want to know, right? What will the solution to this equation tell you? If you solve for x, what does this x represent? How many you got right? Not how many you got wrong, right? How many can you get wrong and wrong enough? Yeah. Subtract this yeah. from take a 31 minus that x, and then that's uh, that is what we want, right? That's what we want. <coughs> so let's write a, a new equation. We want 31 minus x, where now this x, right, let's use a different x because that's going to be a little confusing. This is going to be a different number. Let's say uh, w. Why do, you, why do you think I use w? For wrong, right? Wrong starts with w. Uh, so 31 minus the number wrong over 31 needs to come out to be 0.82. And let's say at least for, for this section, checking solutions, that'll be fine. That'll work just fine. Uh, so you could just guess, right? You could put a three in there. Does that work? Four, does that work? Does five work? Right? We just keep plugging in numbers until one of them gets this is what we want to know. Okay. Um, so, what about if I change this and said, not get 82, but get at least, at least 82%. How does that change the problem? First we said that it is 82%. How does it change when we say at least 82%? Can it be 82%? Would that work? Would that fit this at least condition? <coughs> okay. Could it be anything else? What? Higher than 82 or greater than 82. Okay. So what we want could come out to be greater than or equal to 0 0.82, 82%. Okay. What expression goes over here? What expresses the score that we're going to get on the test? What expression tells us the, the decimal that you'll score on the test? Okay. 
that's constructed. So first tell you the number that you get wrong. What do you do with that number? If you're, if you're ultimately trying to figure out your score. Nathan? You subtract it from the total, right? What do you get when you subtract the number wrong from the total? Oh, not Nathan, I'm sorry. Daniel? The number right. Okay, so the number right, 31 minus the number wrong. Now we have the number right, what do we do with that if we want the decimal? Cameron? Divided by 31. Divided by 31? Well, that's just exactly what we had right there, isn't it? Not that I don't like you answering, Nathan. I think it's great. I was disappointed with everyone else. So here's an inequality that if we solved for it, if we got w is whatever, we figure out that w could be uh, several different things. Um, what kind of solutions did you find for, for this w? How many, how many can you miss and get 82? 82%. Nathan, go for it. Around six? Okay. Well, how does that change here? Could, should w, w could be six, right? It could be equal to six. That's that bottom part, right? Of the of or equal to. Okay. Could it be more than six. Could w be more than six or equal to six? Okay. If you miss six, that gets you about a what? About what? Eighty percent. Here we go. Eighty-two. Well, eighty-two. 5.5? So 6 is a little too much? Yeah. Okay, then uh, let's go to 5.5. Okay, so if it's equal to 5.5, that gives you about 82. All right, that's more precise, that's good. Um, could it be more than 5? Can you miss more than 5.5 and still get 82% or at least 82%? No. So you have to get what? 5.5 or, or less. 5.5 or less. Okay. And we'll just put a little approximately. Approximately W needs to be less than or equal to approximately 5.5. So as you work these out, if there's one gift you could give to me, and believe it or not to yourself, it would be not to call an expression an equation. Okay? Uh, not to say something like 5 plus 2t minus uh, 3t plus 6t squared. Uh, a really common thing to say is, how do I solve this? Okay. And I understand that it's like there's a problem and I want the solution to the problem. But in math, you don't solve this. You could simplify this. You could combine like terms. You could do things like the only things you can solve are statements, definitive, true or false statements, equations, inequalities, uh, things like this. Okay? Those are the things that have solutions. Things that are, solutions are numbers, and when you plug them in, they make a true statement. And the only statements we have are equations and inequalities. Feel good? Any questions? Okay.